And we have come to the last step of our workflow. So we have clustered cells and we are ready to detect and visualize market chains for those clusters. In this video, you will learn what we mean with a market chain, what aspects of single cell RNA-seq data complicate differential expression analysis, and why we want to filter out genes prior to statistical testing. So let's start with the market chain. So here we have two UMAP visualizations of the same data. On the right hand side, we have colored uh, cells uh, by the cluster they belong to. So each dot is a cell here. On the left hand side, we have colored the same cells uh, by the expression of this particular gene. And as you can see, it's, it's expressed in cluster three and not so much at all in the other clusters. So it's a good marker for this cluster. So why is differential expression analysis of single cell RNA-seq data challenging? The data is noisy. The starting material is low, hence we get low counts, so low UMI counts. We get high dropout rate, meaning that there can be genes which are expressed, but we just don't detect them. And there can also be amplification biases, so trans some transcripts get uh, better amplified than others. Also, the uh, total number of UMIs per cell varies a lot, so we have uneven sequencing depth. We tried to deal with all these problems earlier in the workflow, in the normalization, for example. So now there are different kinds of tests uh, to investigate differential expression. The default one is a non-parametric test. It's the Wilcoxon Rangsum test or Man Whitney U test. Uh, the thing to remember with that one is that it can fail in the presence of many tight values. Uh, so when there are the same values. And this is, of course, the case because we have a lot of uh, zeros because of the dropouts in our data. Then some uh, tests are specific to single cell rna like the MAST test. And it can take advantage of the fact that we have large number of cells. In other words, uh, we can consider the cells as samples. So we have a large number of samples uh, for each group. That's cluster we are testing. And mask can actually account for those stochastic dropouts and bimodal expression distribution. So down here, you have some examples of, uh, of uh, expression distributions of different genes. And you can see that there are all sorts of shapes, uh, including this bimodal one. Then there are tests which were originally made for bulk RNA-seq data analysis, such as DSEq2. Uh, it is based on negative binomial distribution, and it has been shown to work OK for the UMI data. Now, DSEq2 is actually very slow, so uh, you should use it only for comparing two clusters, not comparing one cluster to all the other cells. The other thing to note is that uh, you should not filter genes prior to using DSEq2 because the way how DSEq2 works is that it models dispersion by borrowing dispersion information from other genes which are expressed at similar level. So I have borrowed this slide from Vishwa Gimire from the University of Helsinki just to remind you how the Wilcoxon Rangsum test works. So in our example, we have one gene, gene A, and we have two clusters, cluster one and cluster two. Each of these clusters have four cells. So we have measured the expression in these four cells and the values are here. So now we take this expression values from both cluster one and two, put them in the table in a increasing order, and then we give them rank values. So the first two are the same. So this is a tight situation. So we, uh, instead of writing one and two here, we put one and a half uh, to each. Then we 
put these rank values back to our table. So essentially we replace the original expression values by the rank values, and then we calculate a sum of the rank values, uh, both for cluster one and for cluster two. Then we calculate U statistics for both cases. So here is the formula. We plug the numbers here. We had four cells, so hence our N is four. And these are the ultimate U statistics values we get. We take the smaller one, uh, which is uh, this one here, and then we compare it to the U critical value. And as we can see, uh, this one is bigger than zero. So the, our conclusion is that there is no significant difference of this gene uh, between cluster one and cluster two. Why would we want to filter out genes prior to statistical testing? We test thousands of genes, so it is possible that just by chance we get good p-values for some genes. So. Uh, those genes might not actually be differentially expressed, but uh, we, we just get a, a nice small p-value for them. So they're actually false positives. And we want to, of course, avoid this problem. So there are many multiple testing correction methods available. All of them, the idea is that the amount of correction you apply depends on the number of tests. So the number of genes tested, because each gene is an individual test. The Serra package and therefore Chipster uses the Bonferroni correction, which is actually quite a harsh correction method. And what it does, it takes the raw p-value and multiplies it by the number of genes tested. So you can see that it's our interest to keep this number small. And well, of course, so in addition to this, the filtering also speeds up testing. So I will soon show you how you can filter, but let's first have a look at the tools that are available in Chipster for this. So there are actually two analysis tools that do differential expression analysis. So one of them is uh, built in in the clustering tool already. So the tool is called Clustering and Detection of Cluster Market Genes. It does a lot of things. So it performs the actual clustering, visualizes the clusters, but it also detects markers by comparing one cluster to, to all the other cells. And it produces a table of market genes for every cluster. Now this tool does not include DSEQ2 because it would be very slow in this kind of context, this kind of comparison. Whereas DSEQ2 is available in this other tool, which is called Find Differentially Expressed Genes Between Clusters. So this tool you use after clustering, meaning that as input, you give the R object that came from this tool. So, so this tool can compare gene expression between two or more clusters. So you can also actually do the same comparison as here. So taking one cluster and comparing it to all the other cells. So let's have a look how the parameter panels look like for these tools. So this is the first tool here, which has, of course, lots of parameters for the other steps it does. But down here are the parameters relevant for, for market gene detection. So you need to uh, select the actual test to use. And here you have the filters. So you can, for example, limit the testing to genes which are expressed in at least this fraction of cells in either of the two groups. And remember that the two groups can mean all the other cells. So the default is 10%, but you could quite safely increase that. Then the other filter you have is that you can limit testing to genes which show at least this log twofold change between the two groups. Now the default here is 0.25, but remember that this is in log two scale. So for example, if you put one here, it means actually a twofold change in linear scale. Or if you put two, it would mean fourfold in linear scale. 
Then this is the parameter panel for the other tool that I mentioned. So here uh, you have to select the cluster and to what you are comparing it. Then again, the same parameters as I just mentioned. So uh, the fraction of cells where the gene has to be expressed, here I have increased it from the default, and also the block two fold chains uh, that you require. There is also uh, one more parameter here where you can say whether you want to have only the genes with positive uh, fold chains to be reported. Then the result tables you get look like this. So they have the adjusted, Ponferroni adjusted p-value, which is of course, this is the most important column here. You have also the log to fold change, the original p-value, and then the percentage of cells expressing this gene in, uh, in, in the two uh, groups of cells that you are comparing. And here you also have the cluster number. So from this big table, uh, so this comes from the first tool that I was explaining. So if you wanted to pull out uh, genes specific to, to one particular cluster, you would want to filter this table based on this cluster column. And there is a tool for that in the utilities category called filter table by column value where you need to tell which column you use for filtering, what is the cutoff, and how do you compare the value to this cutoff. So now we uh, require equal to because we want to have only genes, uh, market genes for cluster three. Then there's also a question, does the first column have a title? And we say no here, because if we look at the table, the first column does not have a table uh, uh, title uh, because it's a so-called row names column, uh, typical for R. And then finally, when we have our cluster market genes, we might want to visualize them. So there is a tool for that, uh, Visualize Genes, which produces this kinds of plot. So uh, there is dimensional reduction plot. You can select if you want to map this Neo PCA plot and it will be colored with the expression of the gene that uh, you want to visualize. So in my case, it's CD29A gene, and we can see that there is this particular cluster that uh, seems to lit up with this expression. It also makes a violin plot, which you can see here, which shows expression probability distribution uh, across the different clusters. So we see that it's cluster three, which uh, this gene seems to be a good marker for. And finally, there is a rich plot. And again, it tells the same story. So cluster three seems to be the, the one detected by this uh, gene.